Hello everyone, today we will discuss about hemostasis. So what is hemostasis? Hemostasis is a tightly regulated process that helps to maintain the blood in the fluid state in the normal vessels. Whereas when there is vascular injury, it helps in formation of hemostatic clot. Okay, the pathological counterpart of hemostasis, the disease associated is thrombosis. It involves the blood clot formation within the intact vessels. Now, we have to understand that hemostasis and thrombosis involve three components. The endothelium, the platelets and the coagulation cascade. We will discuss each one. Firstly, we will discuss that after injury what happens is, after any endothelial injury, Firstly, what happens is there is vasoconstriction mediated by certain neurogenic mechanisms and endothelins and then there is a second step that is known as primary hemostasis. In this, the hemostatic plug is formed by platelets. No coagulation system is involved. Then there is secondary hemostasis where coagulation pathway is activated and when the coagulation takes place, the clot is formed, then uh, when the vessel is repaired then the fibrinolytic system is activated to dissolve the clot. Now we will understand the hemostasis on the basis of three things. Firstly we uh, as we understood earlier that vascular injury when takes place. So there is a, a step of primary hemostasis. So in this uh, part in the platelets when we discuss platelets we will understand how the primary hemostatic plug is formed. So after vascular injury, what happens is that uh, the extracellular matrix get exposed and the von Willebrand factor present there is exposed. Now, uh, the platelets will undergo, first step was adhesion, then will be secretion, then will be aggregation. Let's discuss firstly the adhesion step. To discuss the adhesion step, here we can see that here the vessel is injured. Okay, and the extracellular matrix has been exposed and the von Willebrand factor, which is this red cones, these are exposed. Now, they interact with the platelet. This one is a platelet and here is the glycoprotein 1B. It interacts with von Willebrand factor and this step is known as adhesion. Okay, then the second step takes place in which the secretion of various mediators from the platelet like calcium ADP it takes place and it will uh, start then the third step is aggregation it helps uh, it is with the glycoprotein 2b and 3a okay this one the blue one and this doesn't help in aggregation it, uh, sorry this doesn't help in adhesion it helps in aggregation it helps how is it uh, joins one platelet to another platelet with the help of uh, in, in the intermediate what will happen is fibrinogen will come in between them and the whole uh, aggregation will take place and the whole thing this whole thing is known as primary hemostatic plug okay now diseases associated with it are uh, if there is deficiency of uh, this one, glycoprotein 2B3A, it's known as Glanzmann thrombosthenia, glycoprotein 1B, it's Bernard Solier syndrome, and here is a von Willebrand disease. This will all lead in bleeding and coagulation disorders. Okay. Now, uh, uh, just discussing uh, the thing I have discussed already. First was the adhesion. Here we understood that uh, glycoprotein 1B and 1 Willebrand factor they interact. Okay, then is the secretion, especially of the calcium and the ADP, which leads to aggregation. Then there is aggregation with the help of glycoprotein 2B and 3A. This was the role of platelets. Now going to second part, that is coagulation factor role. So coagulation factor, what is what does coagulation cascade do? We know it is of two types. It is divided into two types. There is intrinsic pathway, there is extrinsic pathway. We will not discuss this in very detail, but this each step leads to uh, at the end it will lead to thrombin formation, and further thrombin will lead to formation of fibrinogen to fibrin uh, monomers and 
at the end the fibrin poly polymers will be formed now let's discuss it in brief here is the coagulation pathway so coagulation pathway it ha it is divided like that it uh, in the laboratory which we study is different and in vivo it's different so in laboratory the main pathway which is used is intrinsic pathway because we add glass beads we add calcium so that the factor 12 is activated firstly and then it will further lead to thrombin formation with various steps in which each this is each proenzyme will be converted into enzyme and then the uh, uh, step will continue uh, and the fibrin clot will be formed here the extrinsic path can also be activated in which the tissue factor is activated and then the process continues in this uh, we need uh, vitamin k for certain factors and we need calcium okay these are needed now in vivo what is the difference is in difference is the main role is played by the extrinsic system the main role is played by the uh, not the intrinsic system the extrinsic system because on the injury the tissue factor is exposed and then the series of steps will take place the factor 7 will be converted into 7a then 9 will be converted into 9a and with the help of 8a it will lead to formation of uh, factor 10a will be activated then thrombin will be there and then the fibrin clot will be formed this is the slight difference between the laboratory and in vivo okay so this coagulation pathway takes place at the end we have understood that the clot is formed okay the clot is formed this is uh, when the clot this clot is formed this is uh, the secondary hemostatic plug the stable clot is formed over here now last was the fibrinolytic pathway so what happens in fibrinolytic pathway when the clot is formed and it needs to be dissolved this is released tissue plasminogen activator and neurokinases they are released and it will lead to conversion of plasminogen into plasmid and then the fibrin which was formed will be degraded into fibrin degradation products and then uh, the uh, clot will be dissolved this was the uh, now we will go to endothelium okay now why endothelium needs to be understood separately because endothelium in the hemostasis it has variety of different roles when uh, it comes to antithrombotic when the it is not injured and uh, second when it is injured now normally when it is not injured it ex exhibits that it is antiplatelet it's anticoagulant it's fibrinolytic but when it gets injured it has many procoagulant activities to understand that uh, we will understand that it has uh, numerous of activities which we will understand by this diagram we can see over here this is the endothelium now normally anticoagulant how it acts is it releases heparin like molecule which helps in inactivating thrombin it, uh, it also inactivates factor 10a and factor 9a also normally it secretes tissue factor pathway inhibitor okay and it inhibits uh, factor 5 and factor 8 and this it does with the help of protein c and protein s so these also have anticoagulant effects protein c and protein s also it's there is release of prostaglandin i2 and nitric oxide these all lead to anticoagulant activities of the endothelium but when the injury takes place we know that endothelium it uh, opens its extracellular matrix and von willebrand factor is exposed it leads to procoagulant activities that it releases tissue factors and also it uh, causes uh, slightly first that uh, when the clot is forming that uh, the clot should not dissolve so it inhibits the plasminogen activator also in the beginning phases now this was all about the normal hemostasis do like share and subscribe to my channel in the next video i will discuss about thrombosis because uh, this is the base to understand the thrombosis so thank you for watching this video